in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, it's been a while since I wore this little, it's really a tie, Phil, because I got this little part of my tie, like to jump out and wave at you, and I don't own any tie clips, so I decided I'd go with this mic, so it would be my tie clip, amen, my hands would be free, so I may not know what to do with them, so praise God, we'll get there. I have a wonderful word from the Lord. I told my wife last night, I feel like it's above my pay grade, but nonetheless, we shall try to render it to you as I heard it. If you have notes, if you have the ability to take notes today, it may be one that you want to take notes on. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. <clears throat> God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Now I want you to pay very close attention to the verbiage used in the next two or three scriptures. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his, everybody say his, his kind. We're talking about an herb here. How did it become a his? Whose seed is in itself, and whose, again, is a personal touch upon the earth and it was so verse 12 and the earth brought forth grass and an herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day so today I just want to teach preach minister on this subject the third day the third day let's pray together father we love you thank you for your presence in this place i pray oh god that you would anoint these lips of clay lord i pray that you would anoint our hearing that we would be able to understand the seed and the word that you're going to plant today and father let it spring up let it spring up into maturity that your will be done in us father let our heart be ready we ready our heart to receive your word gladly in the name of Jesus. Father, we take authority over every distraction and every we cast down every evil imagination in the name of the Lord Jesus. And let there be liberty and revelation in your house, in your name, in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. And you may be seated in Jesus' name. Praise God. So there are two things that I want to bring, really three things that I want to bring to your attention about the scripture, and I'm just going to minister, and I'm going to preach as the Lord leads, but number one, on the third day, the earth brought forth grass, and secondly, on the third day, the fruit tree yielded fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. And as we go on in Genesis, after the fall of Adam and Eve into disobedience and sin, the judgment went out over the man, the woman, and the serpent. And in Genesis 3.15, some prophetic words were loosed right out of the beginning of time. He said, I will put enmity between thee, speaking to the serpent, and the woman, between your seed, serpent seed, and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I don't know how loud that is out there, but I can bring it down on mine in just a little bit. I don't want to blast anybody, but I'm going to get loud. That's just kind of the nature of good stuff. <laughs> thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel 
in biology, the man has the seed. I'll be careful. I got a little weird. The man has the seed. All the adults say amen. The woman has an egg. Amen. I don't need to get more graphic than that, I hope. So how was it possible for her seed to even take place? So when we jump to the New Testament in the book of Luke, it says in verse, in chapter 1, verse 30, it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast failed favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth, there's that bring forth, a son, and shall call his name Jesus. So who named Jesus? It wasn't Mary. The Lord revealed his name through an angel. Verse 32, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give him unto give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. In other words, well, in the King, in the complete Jewish Bible, and again, I'll be careful, but it says in the complete Jewish Bible, how can this be? Because I am a virgin. I have not been intimate with a man. I have not received a seed. There is no embryo. How is this possible? Verse 35, the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Ghost shall Come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, say see, seed, that holy thing, the seed which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So because there was no man involved in this process, this was the fulfillment of Genesis 3.15, her seed shall bruise thy head, meaning authority, and Satan's seed shall bruise his heel, which is actually a military term, meaning weakness. And so if we are looking to the seed as an offspring, and Mary's seed was Jesus, who was Satan's seed? Or the offspring of Satan. Watch Jesus' words. John 8. 39 through 47. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto him, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the, you would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have but one Father, even God. And Jesus said back to them, If God were you, Jesus, he, he, he goes toe to toe with the Pharisees. <laughs> if God were your Father, ye would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I by myself or of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word, ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie... He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. In other words, he began the lie. Mm -hmm. He was the first to lie. And all liars are his seed. Mm -hmm. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Wait a minute. These are the Jews. These are the chosen of 
God. He was speaking to Jews, but more specifically, in verse 13, he was conversing with the Pharisees who were among the Jews. And so even among the Jews, God's chosen people, there were sons of Satan, or his offspring, that sought to kill the seed of the woman. Are you with me? The history. Luke 22, verse 1 through 4. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover, and the chief priest and the scribes saw how they may kill him. What is the thief do? He's seeking to steal, kill, and to destroy. For they feared the people, then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve, and he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. So the seeds of Satan were among the Pharisees, particularly the chief priests and the scribes. Here we see Satan entered Judas, making him a son or a seed. There was a self-righteous or a self-justified religious spirit that moved between the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They weren't all this way. Some were converted. But the spirit, the seed of Satan was among them. And so we have to be careful that as we grow in God, we need to get away from those that have a religious spirit. Now, we're all a little religious, but watch this religious spirit. Paul warned Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said this, Moreover, understand this, in the last days, I'm going to read from the complete Jewish Bible, she's going to put the King James, it'll read a little differently. In the last days will come trying times. People will be self-loving. Everybody say, selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was going to talk about cell phones and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Money loving, proud, arrogant, insulting, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, meaning you can't please them, slanderous, uncontrolled, brutal, hateful of good, traitorous, headstrong, swollen with conceit, loving pleasure rather than loving God. They retain the outer form of religion, but they deny its power. Amen. Stay away from these people. Paul said, don't hang out with them. Don't eat with them. Stay away from them. Because they're more dangerous than a sinner. A sinner knows they're in sin. But these that pretend to be spiritual, pretend that they are a brother, they are more deadly to your character and to who you are Amen. than you trying to convert a sinner. Amen. Stay away from these people. For some of them worm their way into homes and get control of weak-willed women who are heaped with sins and swayed by various impulses who are always learning but never... Y'all ever met somebody who's always learning all the time? Read the Bible. I'm on my 27th time of reading the Bible. You haven't understood your need to be born again. Yeah. You're ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In the same way was Janus and Jambres who opposed Moses. So also these people oppose the truth. They are people with corrupted minds whose trust cannot pass the test, whose faith can't be proved. However, they won't get very far. I love, I love this. However, they won't get very far because everyone will see how stupid they are. That's not a complete Jewish Bible. <laughs> Just kind of tells it like it is. There's a difference between ignorance and stupidity. Mm -hmm. Ignorance means I don't know any better. Stupidity means I should know better than I do it anyway. Mm -hmm. How stupid they are. Just as happened with those two. Paul was warning Timothy about the people. He wasn't talking about the world. He was talking about the church. Mm. Mm. He was talking about so-called, you know, everybody's a Christian. 
Mm-hmm. Everybody in America is a Christian. Not so, but they say. If they act like this, Paul said, if they produce fruit like this, get away from them. Why? Because they have a seed in them, and you have a seed in you. Your actions will will reveal who your father is. Your actions will reveal who your father is. If they want to backbite and slander and gossip and make false accusations against a preacher, a prophet, a brother, a sister, they are revealing their father, and it ain't Jesus, because he's the spirit of truth and of peace and of way and of life. They are revealing who sees. Genesis 3 and 15 returns. Go back there for a moment and listen to this very specific part. Her seed is going to bruise your head. Her seed would bruise the serpent's head. That word head, a military term, I'm sorry, that word head is actually an authoritative term meaning a ruler or principality, mm-hmm. or power. And that word bruise means to overwhelm or break. And when you put it together, it reads this way. Her seed will shake, overwhelm, and break the serpent's principality or power. Mm-hmm. Man, that's back in Genesis. We ain't got to Jesus yet. Luke 10, 18 through 20, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding this, rejoice not that the spirits. He wasn't talking about serpents that slither on the ground. He wasn't talking about scorpions that can catch you in the wilderness or these little ones that run around in Arizona and different places. No, no, no. He was talking about spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In other words, because you're his kids. Rejoice that you're his fruit, that you're his seed. This word serpent, it does mean a snake. But it also means a sly, cunning, artful, malicious person, a liar, a false accuser, or a slanderer. That's the spirit of the serpent. The spirit of the scorpion is a skeptic. You ever met somebody that's just skeptical about everything? Hmm. They're over analytic. If you see the silver lining, they see all the black. If you see the positive, three quarters is negative. They walk in the room and say, oh, it's all pretty to you. Man, there's an awful lot of black in this room. There's black beans and black carpet and black corn. You might walk in and say, man, I like that white thing the top. You have to sit and pick apart and find the fault in everything. The scorpion, meaning a skeptic, also means to pierce, to sting, thus the term backbiter. I have given you power over all these spirits, but rather rejoice that your name is written. Rejoice that you're mine and not theirs. And the serpent seed, he said, will bruise his heel. That heel being a military term, and this is just powerful. That heel interprets a liar in wait. A liar in wait. Think of a camouflage warrior. Think of guerrilla warfare, which is what made America win against the Brits. They come in all right in front of everybody and their little marching and everything out in front. And you can see them coming a mile away in their troops. And our guys learned guerrilla warfare. They would hide in the trees. They would hide behind the rocks. And there was less of them. But they were greater because they were puppies. And they could pick them off one by one. And so that's what this is saying. They were uh, this heel is a liar in wait or the rear of an army, and, and normally when you see the rear of something, it's the weakest point. You know this isn't my best angle. <laughs> and 
And then it comes together like this. And this, this is all. It comes together like this. Together the meaning means the serpent seed would overwhelm, break the rear of the army of her seed by mistake. The word by mistake is literally in the interpretation of Genesis chapter 3. He's going to do this by mistake. Remember, your God sees everything from the ending to the beginning. And the serpent is going to bruise your seed's heel by mistake. And then your seed is going to shake up, break up, tear up, and overwhelm the seed of the serpent's authority. Anybody get excited about the third day? Amen. On day one, Satan was rejoicing. His seed was excited. They had killed the lamb. They had finally bruised her seed's heel. But on the third day, her seed resurrected, sprang forth with the keys to death, hell, and the grave and in his hands. And the heads of the serpent's seed had been overwhelmed because he had all power in heaven and in earth. And by the third day, the serpent's seed were shaking. They were trembling because they had made a mistake. Yes. Ma'am. By the third day, they realized that Jesus wasn't the problem alone, but that he was the rear flank of an exceeding great army. Yes. Jesus yes. was the firstborn of many brothers. He said, the work you see me do, greater work than me shall you do. Yes. Hey, wait a minute. We made a mistake. So by mistake, they fell right into God's trap. They fell right into him laying and waiting. Little boy, this is the weakest you're going to see me ever now. I will put myself right out there for you to take me out. And they fell right in to his camouflage plan. And if one could put a thousand to flight, and two could put ten thousand to flight, what could generations after generations? If on day one we were weeping, on day three we were rejoicing. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can stay at the cross all day long or understand we got to get to day three where we get up, where he gets up. If he don't get up, it was all in vain. Yeah. Genesis 1, 11 through 13, one more time it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass. The herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. Look at the word. It's saying its kind. It's in his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Let me clear something up. The evening and the morning is the day, not the, not like we think. The day begins in the Jewish calendar, God's calendar, in the evening. And it concludes in the morning. Jesus did not die on Friday, people. And wake up on Sunday. The evening and the morning were the first day. Jesus died on Wednesday afternoon. Because the first eve, the first day was the evening and morning would have been Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Amen. And Saturday evening he got up. The Bible even teaches us that when they rose up early Sunday morning, the stone was already gone. They got up before daylight. So that day wasn't complete. So sometime at the end of Saturday evening, Jesus got up. Amen. It never makes sense to me. Oh, Friday, Sunday, Saturday. That's only two days, man. Those days are going to be in there three nights and three days. Amen. Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday into Friday. Friday into Saturday. He's up. Saturday evening. He's up. I'll let you theologians eat on that for a little while. I'm going to you later. <laughs> That's important to understand. The evening before the morning. Amen. Weeping before rejoicing. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is what's springing up in the morning. Amen. Coming up in the morning. He does everything 
Everything that comes up, comes up in the morning. So number one, on the third day, the earth brought forth grass. Listen to 1 Peter 18 through 25. I know it's a lot of teaching, but you guys can sit for a little two and a half hours. <laughs> I'll try to move around and throw something or something. Or something <laughs> for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Manifest means to be revealed and expressed. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Amen. Listen to verse 23. Being born again. Everybody say, I got to be born again. Jesus said in John 3, you must be born again. I have to be born again. By a corruptible seed. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For listen, for all, listen to the word, for all flesh is grass. <laughs> and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withered and the flower thereof falls away, but the word of the Lord continue and endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So firstly, on the third day, the earth brought forth grass. Everybody say grass. grass. I got some I got some peach grass and some brown and some candy grass and some red black grass and some yellow grass out there. But it's grass. All flesh is as grass. Listen to Genesis 22. I'm going to summarize this. Genesis 22, 3 through 15. It was the third. This is God. It was the third day that Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place where he would offer a sacrifice. And God provided himself a lamb. And it was the third day that Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw a realm. That was called in the thicket by his horns, and he offered it in the place of Isaac, his son, who was his promised seed. Y'all don't do anything by mistake. Mm -hmm. On the third day, the Lord brought forth, everybody say it, grass, me. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 7 through 12, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he, this is awesome, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, look at this, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Amen. He that descended is the same also as ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The earth, the earth brought forth grass. All flesh is grass. On the third day, the earth brought forth Jesus. Amen. On the third day, the earth let go of the Redeemer. The Amen. earth let go of the Resurrector. The Resurrector came forth. Amen. And Jesus gave gifts unto men. Secondly, but that wasn't cool when that's the offer. I thought that was cool. Amen. That the earth brought forth grass. Okay. Secondly, on the third day, I need to impress y'all some more after this. Secondly, on the third day, the fruit tree yielded fruit after his kind. The fruit of Eden. And you eat that after that, man. Dude, you're great. <laughs> You're better than that red one because you're the golden kind. You don't name an Adam, well, they do, but you don't. On the third day, the fruit tree yielded fruit after his kind. 
I know some of you are nervous because of the teaching, but that's what's wrong with the church. Yeah. There's too much fluff and inspiration and not enough ground in it. Yeah. That's why the church is like the, the shaft in the wind and just blowing about. We're going to ground a little today. On the third day, I'm almost done. Don't, don't worry, I'm getting there. The, the landing gear is. Mm -hmm. On the third day, the fruit tree yielded fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. John 12, up to 23 through 24. Jesus answering them said, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say to you, except a corn of wheat, if I say seed, seed, fall into the ground and die, it shall abide alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. John 15, 1 through 5, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Number five, I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Amen. I can't do a thing without. I can't breathe properly without. John 14, 11 through 14. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, whose seed is in itself. Huh? Or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Luke 6, 43 through 46. For a good tree bringeth forth not corrupt fruit. Neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Here it is, verse 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Amen. It. For of the thorns men do gather figs, nor a bramble bush gather their grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. If cursing's coming out of your mouth, then it's also in your heart. Amen. If backbiting and gossip and judgment's coming out of your mouth, then your heart's full of it. In verse 46, he says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things which I say? He said earlier, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. In other words, Jesus is saying, your actions are louder than your words. Amen. You can say, I'm a Christian all day long, but if you're not obeying his commandments, you're not showing him love. Amen. Jesus loves me. You're right. He loves every one of us. He's proven that over and over and over again. But the question is, do you love him? Amen. He loves everybody. But, do, well, there is Esau was he hated. There's some other things that he mentions he hates. In Matthew 7, 20, one more time, it says, Wherefore, by their fruit, ye shall know them. I'm going to wrap that piece up with this. So on the third day, Jesus began to yield fruit of his and after his own kind. He was the firstborn of many brethren. Back and said, I gotta go away so I can prepare a place for you. That where I am, where was he? He was standing right in front of them in body, in flesh, but the Holy Ghost was in him. Yeah. The kingdom of God was in him. He said, So where I am, I'm in the kingdom, you're not yet. 
But I got to go prepare a place so you can be like I am where I am. Amen. And so he dies on the cross. What is the last thing he says? He gave up the ghost. Holy Ghost. So it left the flesh. And then on the day of Pentecost, it came on us. Amen. He went and died on the cross, released his spirit, so that on the day of Pentecost, he could produce more fruit in himself mm -hmm. and the seed of him more than any other. Amen. Amen. You don't remember the accident? All the way in Genesis, he was talking about the day of Pentecost. All the way in Genesis, he's, I'm going to show you all the way in Genesis. He was preaching Acts 2 38. The third day, Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 18. We're going to talk about Moses just for a moment, and then I'm, I'm going to wrap up. I know that this point is getting between you and two. Talk about two. Does Ron think about two? He thinks about hamburgers. I think about everything. I'm going to lose y'all right now. All right. This is cool, y'all. I'm telling you, this is cool stuff. Amen. This is up to 2 a.m. cool stuff. Why wouldn't you hear at 10.30 for prayer, Pastor? Why well, wouldn't you up at 2 a.m. with me? Mm. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall ye be a particular or peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me kingdom of priests and in holy nation, God speaking. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and listen to what he says. Sanctify them to the day and tomorrow. I'm sorry, sanctify them today. And tomorrow let them wash their clothes. You ain't seen it yet. You, you'd be here at 10.30 just pre prayer get ready to do it. Sanctify them. What, what, how do you sanctify? You repent. And tomorrow let them wash their clothes. Everybody say garment. Garment. Everybody say grass. Yeah. And be ready against what? The third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Sinai, verse 14. And Moses went down from the mountain unto the people and sanctified the people. And they washed their clothes, verse 15. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your, come not at your wife. In other words, absence for you adults. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mountain and Mount Sinai was altogether a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Are you hearing me? In fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. So, number one, on the first day, they repented and sanctified themselves. On the second day, they washed their garments. And on the third day, the Lord manifested himself with thundering and lightning and fire descending on them. Amen. I didn't make it to Acts yet. We're still in Exodus. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound, lightning, thunder, from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it fell upon them, or sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utter. They had their Mount Sinai experience on the day of Pentecost. Ma'am. I'm sorry that doesn't excite you like it did. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 36. So Peter's preaching to him, and I'm rapping, I'm closing, musicians can come. Watch this. Holy Ghost falls, Peter's preaching. He 
It gets to the conclusion, basically says, you rotten people. You bunch of stupid ones. You killed God in the flesh. So they're like, so what do we do to fix that? <laughs> Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you killed, both Lord and Christ. Keep going. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. What do we do? Then Peter said unto them, everybody say one, one. one. repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Everybody say, wash your garments. In Revelation, it says that our garments will be washed whiter than snow yeah. by his blood. It was true on Mount Sinai. And it's true today. That was the first step is to repent. The second step is that I need to wash my garments in the water. Calling on the name of Jesus so his blood could come up and cover me. Washing this garment, this grass, this flesh white as snow. White as snow. And then he says, for he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The fire falling on top of Sinai. The fire falling in the upper room. The same fire, the same Holy Ghost falling on me and you. Because the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn you. The fire of the Holy Ghost will illuminate your mind. You know, before every year, let's stand together. Before every season, if you're driving along some of these country roads, you'll see people out in the fields, and they're just out in their yard, even in front of houses, and you see the earth blackened, and, and they're burning their grass. Anybody ever seen one? Drive by and they're burning their grass? Yo, dude! I know it's brown, but you just made it black. Why are you charring your earth, dude? Don't you like it in the street? Don't you like it in the street? Yeah. So what are you doing? I'm burning out all, all the dead. That's what they do. They're burning that top layer of dead grass. And it's not long. They ain't got to wash it maybe a rain or two. It comes forth pretty, beautiful, green. It's greener had they not burnt it. I'm just letting mine grow back up. I don't want to burn my front yard. I don't want to roll back into my house. But their grass is greener than mine because they first burnt the dead grass. The Holy Ghost has got to burn some dead stuff out of us. Amen. That's why we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to be born from above because he's got to burn some stuff out of our mind. Some of us need to get a whole lot of deliverance. Some of that shame, some of that guilt, some of that trauma, some of that just mess, life sprawled us. But that's why we need this plan. we got to repent. We need to be baptized. And we need to receive the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues as his spirit gives us the word. Amen. This is what it says in verse 39. For the promise is unto you, say me, okay. and to your children, and to all that are afar off. Don't say it was just for Jerusalem. Unto them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the scripture teaches that he has called us all to repentance. This was John the Baptist's ministry. you got to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And with many other words, he testified and exhorts, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. What is Acts 2 38 talking about? Saving yourself. How do you save yourself? You repent. You get baptized. You receive the Spirit. He regenerates you. You take on the seed of the Father. Amen. 
or this promise. You take on the promise seed of the Father. It's unto you. It's for you. Why would you deny it? It's the power of the salvation. They that gladly, if I say gladly, received his word were baptized. They didn't question. They didn't argue about how. They just did what they said. The same day they were added unto them 3,000 souls. While your eyes are closed, I have one last scripture to read to you. Ready? It's found in Hosea 6. Listen very carefully to the word of the Lord. He said, Come, let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain and the former rain unto the earth. I wonder if we could all just come around the front. You're welcome to come and kneel at the first row or across the platform. But let's take some time today and let's repent. Because none are perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But if we want a third day experience, we can't get there without repentance. If you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can't get there without repentance. The water baptism is a choice to enter into a covenant with Jesus that says everything that's short is mine. And everything that's mine is yours. Come on, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we worship you, Jesus. We love you. We bless you. Come on, don't let me pray for you. Pray with me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Father, I love you. I want to walk with you. I want to return to you. I want to be faithful to you because even though I haven't been faithful, you've always been there for me. Jesus, forgive me of my lying, my cheating, my stealing. Forgive me of my being disobedient to my parents. Forgive me for the times that I've been unfaithful and unthankful. Forgive me, Jesus. I don't want to be a son or a seed of the serpent. I want to be a daughter. I want to be a man. I want to be a son of God. Jesus, I want your seed. I want the Holy Ghost. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. I want the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. I need you to birth me again. Lord, I want to be born again. I need your spirit. I need your blood. I need you. Come on, talk to him. You can't, you can't repent with your mouth shut. Come on, we need to confess. If you're concerned somebody's going to hear you, bury your mouth in a chair. Cover your faith and face, but open your mouth and talk to him. Jesus, come on, he said if you would confess, your sins. If you would confess to him, he is just and he is faithful to forgive. Jesus, forgive me. Father, wash me. I need your blood in my life. I need you to make my garment white. I messed it up. I messed it up. There's sin in my life and I don't want it in my life anymore. I want to live for you. I want to walk for you. I want to be in communion with you. I want you to take over my life. I want you to lead my life. I want you to decide my career. I want you to decide my education. I want you, oh God, to lead me where to live, where to eat, what to do. Order my steps, Jesus. I want you to lead me. Forgive me, Lord, for I made a mess of leading myself. And I need you to lead me. I need you to lead Hallelujah. Come on, Lord, I love you, Jesus. I 
bless you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. I thank you that you're merciful. Come on, if you repented and you confessed some things, thank you because of his mercy. I thank you, Lord, that you're merciful. I thank you, Lord, that you love me. I thank you, Lord, that you're willing to forgive me. I thank you, Lord, that even as I confess that you forgive me, you remember the Sunday. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. With every head still bowed and every eye closed, there are some here who need to hear what I'm about to say. You want to walk with God, but you don't know where to begin. You begin in repentance. Where do I go from there? We all need the Holy Ghost and we can seek the Holy Ghost. But the next thing that you can do is you can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we are baptized for the remission of our sins. We can repent, but they're not forgiven until we go into covenant and we're baptized in water, calling on His name. Those are the two things that we can do and then we can praise Him freely until He fills us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you today to consider baptism. If you've never been baptized, I need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Father, that's where I understand your name is applied to my life. I want to enter into the family of God. I want your name on my life. I want you to adopt me into your family through water baptism. I want whatever's yours, and I want you to have control of whatever's mine. I love you, Father. I bless you, Jesus. I worship you. Let's just love him together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, let's just stand together. Come on, let's stand together. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. This, this, this is surrender. This is surrender. Come on, let's just surrender. I surrender to you, Jesus. I surrender my mind. I surrender my will. I surrender me, Jesus. If you're having trouble lifting your hands, that's your pride, and you need to repent of your pride. You should be able to lift your hands to the King of glory and say, you're more powerful than me. You can do it better than me. I've made a mess of it, but you can fix it. You can make it right. You can heal me. Come on, surrender to it. Lift your hands and say, I surrender. I surrender, Jesus. Heal my mind. Heal my body. Heal my spirit. Heal my soul, God. Make me whole, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Right. 